Okay. Thanks for your patience. Um, so we're doing chapter four and um, this is called Finders Keepers and Losers Weepers. And this features uh, Krista and Alex hanging out together downtown and meeting uh, what will become a central character. Finders Keepers and Losers Weepers. Of all the vacation spots, mountains, parks, oceans, and canyons, the most beautiful place in the United States of America is Wisconsin's town of Hayward. Definitely. The day before my parents' teaching program started, Dad and I took Alex on a tour to show him the town's best places. We, went, we spent the morning at the National Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame, which is in a building shaped like this gigantic fish, and obviously the best of all halls of fame. Dad took pictures of us standing in the balcony, which is tucked inside the fish's mouth. We leaned on the fake fish teeth and smiled for the camera. After lunch, we watched a lumberjack demonstration and got ice cream from the world's best ice cream store. Then we went to the world's best candy store and watched the fudge lady who worked in front of the window. She stirred fudge in this huge vat and smiled at people on the sidewalk. I wondered if she ever stuck her finger in the vat and tasted the fudge when people weren't watching. Oh, the fudge lady had the best job in the world. But I saved the best for last. While Dad went to the used bookstore, I took Alex around the corner and down two blocks to Nan's Bait and Tackle. We always got our live bait from Nan Klein, who opened her very own bait store when she graduated high school. She'd been selling bait and tackle for more than 30 years. I wanted to become Nan's partner when I finished school, and every time I left the store, she'd tell me, hurry up and graduate, would ya? As far as I was concerned, Nan was the only person in the world who could tell me to grow up. Alex gagged when I opened the door. He spit his candy into the trash can and plugged his nose. Man, it stinks. The smell is making my sour worms taste like fish. I looked around. Nan wasn't at the counter, so she was probably in the back room. I hissed, that's mean. Don't let her see you plucking your nose. Alex's arm dropped to his sides, but the frown didn't leave his face. I don't see what's so special about this place. True, the floor was dirty. Paint peeled from the walls near the ceiling, and everything that had once been white was now gray. It looked exactly like it should, like a place where Hayward's most ex expert fishermen and fisherwomen swapped stories about the ones that got away. I pulled Alex by the arm and led him to the bait tanks that lined the wall. A kid from Arizona had a lot to learn about living on a lake. I will teach you the different kinds of bait. I don't need you to teach me. I said, these are golden shiners. They're great for catching big fish. Have, have you ever used golden shiners? Alex watched the minnows dart across the tank. He moved to the next tank and then the next. I like these silver ones better. Fathead minnows. <laughs> They're very ordinary. Clearly, Mr. Edmund Clark hadn't explained bait to his only grandson, which was weird. The old man wasn't a chit-chatter, but he could talk bait and tackle forever. He once spent 10 minutes by the dock in the pouring rain, telling my dad that while I bit on fat heads and chub in the spring, but you definitely want to switch to worms and leeches in the summer. Dad was wet and freezing, but didn't leave until the lecture was done because Mr. Edmund Clark is so scary. Look who's here, Krista Boyd Adams. Nan's arms squeezed me from behind and I turned and hugged her back. She'd cut her long hair into a short bob, but she still smelled like bait and earth and pine. Northwood's perfume. She said, I was wondering when you'd stop in. Hmm. My parents sold our boat, but we're going to fish from the dock. I saw your mom a few days ago. She told me about the boat and selling the cabin. I'm sorry. She mussed up my hair. I'm selling the shop too. So we'll go out at the same time. Seems right, doesn't it? What? Why? That's crazy. Mm, tough business selling bait and gear. 
One of the new gas stations started selling bait, plus someone's opening a shop in that new strip mall. Besides, young couple wants to buy my building. It's good timing for me. Alex wandered down the wall of tanks, watching the minnows. Olivia Stanger was selling his neighbor's cabin, mine. The bait shop was closing, and his grandfather wasn't making pizza anymore. He didn't even care. Man said, you'll get a chuckle out of this. The buyers want to remodel my building and open a tea shop. She faked a very bad British accent. They will sell the finest crumpets and tea. I said, that's the dumbest thing I have ever heard. Nan laughed as she wandered back to the register, poured herself coffee from the little pot on the counter. Funny thing, isn't it? Tourists leave the suburbs and come to our little town to get away from the suburbs. And what do they want? Stuff from the suburbs. Nan was not getting a chuckle out of me because it wasn't funny. How could everything change in one summer and all because of money? The door opened and a police officer stepped inside. Sheriff Duncan, how are ya? Nan poured him a cup of coffee and they started that adult talking about the weather thing. I looked at the fishing pole display with Alex until he nudged me and pointed to the register where Nan and the sheriff stood. I heard the words trespassing and vandalism. The sheriff's voice was deep as a tuba. Oh, the last bunch just dug holes in the ground like they figured money had been buried there. All this nonsense is happening in my county on my watch. I've had it. I'm just wondering if any tourists have been asking for directions to Capone's property. He towered over Nan, and his eyes looked like ice. When he yelled halt, I bet people halted. Mm, not that I remember, Nan said. Why tourists? Well... I got to thinking that trespassers, they might not be local. Maybe some of the tourists have been asking questions about how to get there and what the security is like, you know, that kind of thing. Nope. The only thing tourists ask me is about the best fishing spots. She refilled his coffee. I wish someone would buy Capone's old property and reopen it. How did treasure like that go bankrupt in the first place? Even my tiny bait shop survived the recession. Sheriff Duncan said, advertising, I don't think they did enough advertising. Amelia the princess was always telling me to mind my own business, but some people's business was just too interesting. I left Alex by the display, walked to the counter, and butted into their conversation. Nan, has every, anyone ever found any money out there or anywhere? She leaned on the counter. Well, in the 1970s, an old guy named Sherwin Johnson was remodeling a resort. Capone's uh, buddies stayed there a few years ago. He opened up a wall, and he found $1,000. Serious? Dead serious. Did he get to keep it? I suppose so, Nan said. Nobody could put a real claim on it, could they? All those gangsters were dead. I nodded. Finders keepers. Sheriff Duncan took a sip of his coffee and looked right in my eyes. The problem, young lady, is that whenever you have finders keepers, you also have losers weepers. That's what makes it a crime. Hmm, I said. I looked at Alex, thinking he'd speak up, but he just stared at his shoes. Well, Sheriff, someone was digging around at Clark's Pizza too. They broke into the basement. Sheriff Duncan didn't look surprised. Well, now, that's different. Sherwin Johnson stumbled among, upon that money, and he had no connection. The Clarks, well, they were actual business associates of Capone's. Crooks, all of them. The son left town and never came back. Don't tell me that's not suspicious. Alex's cheeks went from white to red, like his whole face had been pinched. Nan said, I went to school with Neil. He was a good guy. The Clarks never had two dimes to rub together. They are not sitting on a fortune. Of course they are, Sheriff Duncan said. That's why old Neil ran off. He's mad because old Ed wants to donate his stash to that fishing hall of fame. Everyone says so. That guy's nuttier than a peanut factory. 
Oh, Ed was never the same after Mrs. Clark died. He made Neil quit the hockey team because he needed to work in the restaurant. Neil could have had a scholarship. He was that good. Anyway, he left because he wanted a new life and it didn't have anything to do with money. Neil was a cutie. This had turned into an awkward moment for sure. Normally, I barely noticed awkward moments. My parents were always explaining them to me afterward. But this made me want to crawl out of my skin. I had to stop this before Alex melted into the floor. So I cleared my throat and said, This is Alex Clark, Neil's son. They moved here to take over the restaurant. Nan's face went white red even faster than Alex's. But Sheriff Duncan just cocked his head. You don't say. I do say. They moved here from Arizona. Sheriff Duncan studied Alex from head to toe. Finally, he said, Welcome to Hayward, Alex Clark. Nan stammered. Oh, so Alex Clark, Neil's son. Then she thought a moment. You're Neil's son? Goodness, he got a late start. I already have two grandsons your age. Oh. Alex rocked his feet a bit. Well, you better be on your way, Krista. And Alex, you tell your dad I said hello. Seems like I'm always open, so you tell him to stop by, okay? Sheriff Duncan nodded. By all means. I'm always open, too. You tell him to stop by. That's it. We'll see you tomorrow. Hope you guys are doing a lot of reading and getting off your devices and getting some time outside and helping your parents with some chores, okay? All right, see you tomorrow. Bye.